Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchard and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything keeps falling apart Yeah You try to do your best But only God knows that you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for True show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, and it's a pleasure to have you back with us. It's a great time of the year. Soon it'll be July 4th, a great independence celebration, fireworks, families getting together. And in that vein, talk about those who have families who have something uh, going on. There's a, you know, a person in their family who's not doing well. They've turned to drugs and we want to help them and we want to do something, but we don't know what to do. And it gets very distressing. You get, you get very overwhelmed, very sad. But tonight we have a very special person with us, a physician who's going to give us something that we can actually do for those loved ones that, that, that are so dear to us. An engineer, if you could, if you can put the doctor's pictures up on the screen, I want to introduce Dr. Rohid Ad to our Time for Truth viewers. There you see him. And Dr. Ad of Baroda, India, received his medical degree from the Medical College of Baroda in Gurayat, India, and followed up with a residency in internal medicine at Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Subsequently, He took on positions at Palmerton Hospital and then a private practice in Sladington, Pennsylvania. Then an emergency room position as a physician at Our Lady of Lourdes in Lafayette and Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center emergency room to this day. Dr. Ad is certified by the American Board of Internal Medicine and was the medical director of Our Lady of the Lake College Paramedic Program, as well as the medical director for the National Academy of Emergency Health Services. Rohit was assistant medical director of emergency medicine at Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center. And as an emergency room doctor, he's witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of substance abuse, on communities and individuals, and he's assisted in founding the Narcanon New Life Retreat as member of the board of directors, and he serves as the facility's medical director. In India, he began laying the groundwork to establish emergency health, primary, and emergency medical care to remote rural areas, which would not ordinarily have access to these services. He's quite a humanitarian, very community oriented. He's really much more than your just ordinary physician beyond the norm. The doctor is a father of four with his lovely wife and they live in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Buddha, if you will, 
Let's put him up on the screen and bid a warm welcome to Dr. Rohit Odd to a Time for True show. Hello. How are you doing, doctor? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, you know, it's a pleasure and your topic is so important. I want to get right to it. First, I wanted to ask you, how did you decide on a medical career? Well, I come from India. I grew up and um, my parents, as usual, all the Indian parents wanted their children to do well. And education is the ticket. And among the educated, when I was growing up in India 50 years ago, doctors have a special place in the society and they do well. And I had a very good role model. My uncle was a physician and he contributed not only to many of his patients' lives, but also by doing a lot of social activities. And uh, until he passed away, he was very active in my local community. And that inspired me a lot. And he, he was my inspiration, so to speak. Very nice. And then now, so now you're a physician. And then how is it that you start then going into drug rehabilitation? What what brings you to that realm? Well, once I finished my training, I went into private practice. And that somehow didn't quite uh, satisfy my uh, uh desires and it did not quite feel right. Uh, I had felt like I had a very limited scope and there were other things that I wanted to do and get involved with. So I kind of stumbled upon, so to speak, in the emergency medicine realm and I really, really liked it. And I sort of retrained myself and grandfathered myself into emergency medicine. So for the last 30 years, I have practiced emergency medicine full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the late 90s, um, I had a few friends. And most importantly, I had a brother-in-law. He was very, you know, very brilliant. He was a pharmacist and somehow had a pretty bad problem with alcohol. And I sent him to Narcona. and he did fantastic. And I had looked into different programs. I was keenly aware of what the alcohol and drugs do. You know, I, I work in a level two trauma center. I handle traumas and I can say about 90% or more uh, of the accidents that happen. Either drugs or alcohol are involved. There are some sad situations of abuse or injuries at home. Uh, again, alcohol or drugs are involved. And the havoc that wreaks uh, and what options I had to send these people for any kind of treatment or rehabilitation was uh, very dismal. And it still is, it's, it's lacking, so to speak. And uh, during that time, uh, actually, uh, it's an interesting story. The, the Katrina in 2005 brought in lots of volunteers and I, our church hosted, and I personally host, hosted 45 people in my house. And we had at one time 300 volunteers, which our local parishioners were hosting. And uh, we were providing all kinds of help uh, to, and there was there was a tremendous amount of need. And when, we, when I, when we came across, there were a couple of my friends, we said, you know, we, 
we need to do something about this drug problem because what happened was all these patients who were on a methadone maintenance, uh, they became uh, absolutely distraught. I mean, they, they were in trouble. And those who were addicts, they just did not have a means of getting their drugs. So they um, showed up in the emergency room or they were all around. You heard about the crimes that occurred in the in certain uh, shelters. The, the, uh, unfortunately, the Superdome was a site of horrendous problems and a lot of death could be blamed on the drugs. And at that time, with two of our, three of my friends, we decided we should have a Narconon program because, you know, there are uh, some volunteers we can recruit and we can establish a good program. And so that is the genesis of the Narconon Louisiana. And we uh, literally, from the decision to opening, it was eight months. We located a facility, we closed on the, we had a very friendly banker, we closed on a facility it took us about seven months to refurbish. And in August of 2006, we opened our doors and we've been open since. Wow. Well, you know, Doc, um, it's a beautiful story uh, showing people coming together. And in the past few years in our country, and I think really all over the world, uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of separation, distancing, stress, and I see your story is going to be so much more than I even realize. So I wanted to ask you a question because probably a lot of the viewers are very curious right now. So how does this Narconon drug rehabilitation program function and how is it different? Why is it that you liked it so much? Because here you are, you're a physician. I mean, obviously it was your brother as a, as a lay person, as a family member, that's important, but you're also a physician. So, you know, I really value your opinion. So please explain to us and the viewers, how this program works and why you found it so uh, interesting. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of broader picture of what, um, what's available for somebody who is addicted to you know, alcohol or drugs. And uh, usually, you know, this is a progressive problem. It's a relapsing problem. It never ever improves anyone's life and it afflicts people across the social strata. It afflicts people across uh, the color, race, social stature, profession. And one common thing is they all have a dwindling spiral. What I mean by they start going down in their productivity, in their mental well-being, in their physical well-being, and they get into troubles across the board. Uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, and they they get in trouble with the law, they lose their job, and they have all kinds of financial troubles. And many a times I, and they frequently come to the emergency department, we see them in the ER, and uh, uh, a lot of times, no matter how dire the consequences, they're not ready. And at times they would end up in jail and they are like withdrawing in jail. Um, now our prison system is quite aware of these withdrawals. And if you know somebody is on a major withdrawal, they will administer some drugs or they will bring him back to the hospital. Uh, and it's rare when someone says, okay, I'm ready. They, they have hit the bottom and they are like ready to go. And at the same time, we need a bed. They need to go to a detox facility. That is what needs to happen. And we don't have enough detox. And there are not very many detox facilities, 
but if and each facility has its own uh, financial requirements insurance requirements not everyone accepts medicaid and some of these people and a lot of these uh, people with the addiction problem do not have um, insurance or financial wherewithal so it it gets really really difficult and but once they do that kind of gets them maybe three to five to seven days maybe at the most 10 days to two weeks in the detox facility and now what and they go out and it is the the relapse rate is very very high and then suppose that they go to a 30-day program and again still there are some programs which will be successful maybe 5 10 15 percent of the time we're talking success being drug free for six months to a year or two years and as the time goes the the relapse rate kind of keeps going up uh, then we have this advent of this long-term drugs the methadone came on the board in 1964 in the last few years we have naloxone and uh, sobitrex and the combination thereof and if you add those, the two years success rate is like 35, 40%. But again, you have someone who is taking a substance. And again, with the alcohol, that that's not gonna help you much. The Narcanon I came across was very, very unique. It is a long-term, it's a long-term program. It does not use any other medications. During the withdrawal, and the detox, they, you know, we use whatever it takes when uh, addiction specialist prescribes them something, we taper them up. And then we have a very unique program which uses sauna. And we do a sauna detox, which takes about a month. And when they finish that program, they lo no longer have cravings. And they feel better than they have in a long, long time. And that is a big reason for a long, long accessible program. And after that, 30 days, it's a one-on-one -on -one treatment, uh, which allows them to give them a realization about why they started using the drugs in the first place. And let me tell you, not, not a single one, in their youth thinks that they want to have a life with drugs. They don't. But somehow the drugs become a solution. They become solution to a problem. And you know, most of the time, by the time they're ready for help, they do not know what their original problem was or the stack of problems. And then there are problems on top of other problems. And some might just start recreationally, uh, self-esteem issues, peer pressure issues, and before you know it, they really have a problem. And the drugs become solution to that problem. So the next phase of the our treatment program really brings them face to face with that problem. And when, and, and you know what? None of the counselors, none of the therapists can really tell you what that problem is. It is for the individual to figure it out for themselves. And we have exercises and therapies that they do on their own uh, with a twin. And they, by doing those, they, they have realizations. Oh, this is what got me to doing drugs. Oh, this is what happens. And that's when I go really have a craving to go high. And there are gamut of emotions that they turn on when they do these exercises. And it takes about a month. But at the end of the month, this person is walking really high. They have a sure idea what circumstances makes them uh, crave drugs or what was the problem that they were trying to solve. And they are very smart. And they, when they realize that this is the problem, and this is the solution I chose. That was the wrong thing to do. That was the worst thing that they could have ever done. 
And once they know that, it's beautiful. These people, you know, most individuals we get, then you just give them few life skills. It takes about three to four weeks and they're ready to be launched in the society with a absolutely new life. And once I knew all about this program, I just knew that 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 that's a chance where anybody deserves and that really saves lives. And you know, the more exciting thing about that is when you really get one person to trust themselves and have that power of choice for themselves, they are affecting at least 20 people or more around them at work, at home, uh, and in general in society. And we have a very live and very lively social person who is ready to contribute to himself, his family, and to society in general. And that's that's the most exciting thing that the Narcanon program does. Well, you, you know, you know what, Doc, uh, I was going to say something because as as you were talking, uh, you know, I realized some things, and uh, I just wanted to share it with you because, you know, if someone ends a program, and that program that they do, they end up on a drug. That person still probably, I would think, this is my point of view, would still feel like they're dependent, would feel like they haven't really overcome whatever they've had, and probably has a fear uh, because they're on a drug and they don't really have that confidence back. Uh, yet with what you're talking about with the Narconon program, now they're finishing and they're not on any kind of drug. And then you're talking about them looking at what it was that really got them to take the drugs. I know in my own practice as a doctor, as a surgeon, uh, I get asked a lot. There's a person, in fact, I asked recently, a young guy in New York. And what I realized with them is that, you know, I want to try and empower them. And to me, it seems like this Narconon program, uh, because it gets them off of everything, that they really can kind of go back in time to before all of these different drugs and the original drugs and, and their problems. And we, we really saving their lives. I mean, I, I want to ask you a question because it, it's, it seems to me that it'd be amazing. What kind of success stories ha can you share with the viewers on these patients that you've treated and that you rehabilitated through the Narconon program? Well, Dr. Ben, I could tell you, you know, several hundred stories. We have done probably around 16 to 1700 uh, graduates from the program. But let me make wow. one point, okay? Uh, at the Narconon program, once we get them to withdraw, they, they are not on any mind altering medication or substance at all. And that is the first time in years and years that they have, they are an individual without a substance. And when they wow. do the sauna program, they get their ability to think, to feel, to see, to hear, and to imagine and to really their memory back, which is all clouded and it is blunted. You know, people think that, oh, doctor, how do you know what is underlying? Why, why this person is, uh, has such and such problem? And I say, I don't. I, I, I'm not looking at a person in its purity. I'm looking at person with bunch of chemicals on top of one on top of the other. Maybe they start with the an antidepressant and they are, uh, uh, you know, making them sleepy. Then they add another antidepressant to make him awake. Then they get some other side effect. Then they get another medication. And it's not unusual by the time they're coming to us, they have two or three mind altering prescription drugs in addition to the street drugs they're using. And how do we know 
what this person is underneath all this fog. And that is the first time ever we see the person. And I hear it all the time from the parents, from the loved ones, from, oh, we have our such and such person back. And when we know, we have a confidence that we can get you back and we can get your son back, we can get your daughter back. And that is rehabilitation. And that is rehabilitation in a true sense of the way that we have a person, an individual with his personality, with his thoughts, with his memories, with his feelings, with his uh, imaginative uh, energies, with his uh, life force, all in full force back and it is absolutely gorgeous uh, uh, you, you know what that makes total sense to me makes total really beautiful beautiful uh, to have that and you know i look at what's happening in our world and the violence and the prejudices and the unrest and the homelessness and you know to me it seems to me that uh, the program is putting them back to where they can actually deal with life and that we need to move in that direction, that the world to me needs to move in that direction of more humanity, more real returning the person, rehabbing the person to that point. So I want to ask you a question because I'm sure the viewers at this point are saying, geez, I hope he asked, come on, Dr. Fialkov, ask him. So where... Uh, you have your center, and where are the centers located uh, you know, in the United States that they could call uh, before the show is up? Because we're running out of time. So please let the viewers know, how do they contact an Arcanon, and where are they? Well, our center is in Louisiana, and it is called Narcanon Louisiana New Life Retreat. Uh, there is the, the best thing to do, if you put on a Google Narcanon, you will get a Narcanon International site. And there are five Narcanons in the United States. There is one in Clearwater, Florida. There is one in uh, near Denver, Colorado. There is one in Oklahoma uh, near Eufaula called Narcanon Arrowhead. And there is one in California called Narcanon Ojai. But all the center's information is on the Narcanon International website. That is, um, they have toll free numbers. There is a little link. You can put out some information if you want some and somebody we can can get in touch with you and give you information about the program, the, the, the eligibility, who can come. And it is, um, yeah, it, 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 the timing, I cannot emphasize the timing. If when somebody who is suffering with addiction there are few windows to really, really the, the term or the saying that goes, you have to strike the iron when it is hot. It, it really is true in this sense. When they're ready, you gotta be able to get them. Well, you know, God bless you that you exist and that you're really helping people to rehabilitate themselves and the mothers and fathers that are so happy to have their their child back almost to where they began at the beginning. It's a beautiful thing. And for those of you watching, so now we have a solution. For those people that we wanna help that are going the wrong way on drugs, Narcanon, you can check it out and let's see how we can help them to regain their lives. Thank you, Doc, and look forward to having you next time. For those of you watching, get ready for July 4th. We're going to have a great Independence Day. Have a very good night. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you.
given everything you've got, the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.